Okay, this um, this slideshow comes from a really useful website called www.teach-ict.com and what we're going to have a look at here is the uh, features of ATM machines and we're going to have a look at the some of the features of credit cards, debit cards and smart cards. Smart cards being those that have a, a chip inside them. Now, banks will use mainframe computers. You should know uh, the difference between the types of um, types of computer, whether it's a personal computer, a laptop, a palm top, a desktop, a supercomputer, or a mainframe. So, mainframes are quite powerful, not quite a supercomputer, but still more powerful than a desktop. And it's quite important that the banks have this because they're storing lots of records about customers' withdrawals and deposits in the banks. And each bank's mainframe is used to operate a network of ATMs. And ATM is a an acronym for automated teller machines. And a teller was the name in America given to um, people who work behind the counter at banks. Okay, so here are some of the typical things that an ATM can be used for. So you're going to withdraw cash from the ATM. You can check your balance. You can order a minute statement or print it out or order a checkbook. Okay, so we know that in the actual ATM, once you go to one, you'll see them in many, many streets. So we have the magnetic strip reader. It would also now be reading chips as well. So it'll be a chip reader inside there as well. We have the printer, it's an output device. Okay, we're going to have the keyboard. It's going to be a numeric pad. And um, we need a, a screen which is going to display our options. Okay, so if we're going to be using an ATM, we're going to insert the credit card or debit card. So we put our card into the machine and it reads the magnetic stripe on the card. Uh, and from here, it's going to get the account number. Okay. Then the ATM will ask the customer to use their PIN. Now this is the personal identification number. So you really don't want to be writing PIN number when you write this down because otherwise you'd be saying personal identification number number. And once you've actually entered that correctly, the customer can then select options from the menu on the screen. Okay, so why did the banks go to the F go to all the hassle of actually purchasing and installing these ATMs. Well, it keeps their operating costs down as they need fewer actual employees to work in the branches. Uh, the customers will therefore have 24 hours, 24 hour access to their account seven days a week. And there's no need to carry large amounts of cash around because there's so many ATMs, you can get money out when and when you need it. Okay, now there's two types of cards you need to be familiar with for the exam, or familiar with in actual society in general. One's a debit card and one's a credit card. Now a debit card, this allows the user to transfer money from their bank account to the vendor's bank account. Okay, so um, the, the point about the debit card is that you must already have the money in your account. Now, a credit work card seems to be very similar, but the difference is here is that you don't actually have any money on it. What the bank is doing is giving you credit to buy something. And because it's giving you credit, uh, you'll have to pay an interest rate determined by the actual card provider. So, uh, in a way, they're lending you the money to buy something, you're paying them back later, and in the meantime, they're going to charge you interest on that money. Okay, now, chip and pin. Okay, now... In England, it was very typical that the only way you you wouldn't have identity cards. So the only way you could identify yourself used to be signing a signature on the back of the card. Now, this was not a very secure method of uh, keeping your debit card safe. So the idea of a chip and pin was brought in. And that was that you wouldn't just have a, a card with a magnetic strip on it. You would have a card that had a chip that also contained a chip. And inside this chip, you'd have your personal identification number. Okay, so you would enter your PIN, and when you would insert your card into the device, the, the chip uh, reader, you'd have to type in your PIN. And if your PIN was 
what if, if the pin that you typed in matched the pin that was stored on the chip then you'd move on to the next part if it didn't you'd have three goes at doing this if you got it wrong after three goes it would automatically shut down your card so once you type in the the um, the vendor will type in the amount of money that you need to transfer you would type in your pin once you've typed in your pin correctly your account number the amount to be transferred and the account of um, to which the money should be sent this will all go to something called the BACS the bank clearing system and this would be the system that would be involved in updating the customer's account and the vendor's account so let's have a look at um, typical questions that, that go with this so as a number F EFTPOS terminals. Now it sounds quite fancy, but if you break it down, the E is electronic, the F is funds, as in money that you have, the T is transfer, and the P is point of sale. So electronic funds transfer at the point of sale. And point of sale is just a, a very nice way of saying the point at where you actually give your card over to make it well. So you buy something and the, the company or the, the um the the shop uh, assistants actually sell you the item so what is meant by this and how much would, and how does the system work and there's six marks on offer here if we have a look at the exam board's answer so we need to explain that the electronic fund transfer at point of sale this enables you for to, to pay for goods using credit and debit cards that when you purchase your goods the the bill is calculated you hand over your card you need it goes into a chip reader you then need to enter your pin in order to um, ensure that the chip the card actually belongs to you if your pin is correct if, if your pen is if your pin is correct uh, the transfer the transaction is then authorized uh, the supermarket in this case the the scenario was about a supermarket so it contacts your bank or the customer's bank it checks to see if there's significant funds if there are significant funds uh, the amount to be transferred and the the bank account of the actual supermarket is then sent and obviously then what happens is that the BACS clearing system which isn't actually mentioned here but it's the BACS clearing system which will deduct the amount from the customer's bank account and will credit it to the supermarket's bank account and so there you have six six marks for that Another question that you might get asked, asked is a bank uses chip and pin systems at its ATM. A customer withdraws cash by inserting their bank card. Write down the steps involved in the computer processing of the transaction. So to answer this, I would visualize going to a cash point or an ATM. So you insert your card. When you insert your card, it's going to read the uh, bank account details from your card. It's then gonna ask you on the screen to type in your pin once you type in your pin using the numeric keypad it would check this against the pin stored on the the chip on the card if they um, if they match then it assumes the card is yours and then bring up some options to the actual screen you can then in these options for example in Spain or in Barcelona you would have the option of being in Spanish Catalan or various other languages such as English you choose the language that you desire and then it will automatically put itself into that language and give you a list of options such as checking your um, your uh, account um, checking um, or uh, withdrawing the funds from your account once you've successfully processed and if you've asked for some money once the money's been withdrawn you can then uh, then um, place the card back to you and that will be the end of the process so let's have a look at the exam board's answer here so you can see that there's quite a bit